Alright, it's time for another math easy solution. Today we're going to discuss, well, further new absolute values. I did a video a while ago basically introducing absolute values, and I just want to go further into it and look at some properties. Before I get to the pro properties, I just want to recap on what absolute value is. Basically, the absolute value of, of, a, uh, of a number a, let's call this a, means basically, well, it's denoted by this with the two vertical lines like this. And what this means, yeah, it's just a, the distance from A to uh, basically zero on a real number line. Or what I mean by that is if you just draw a line like this, we'll call this, let's say, X, whatever. So then if you have here at zero, if you have negative A and A here, and then the distance, this is the absolute value here. So this is all, all absolute value is. So it's just a distance from it, and it's always greater than equal to zero. So you basically, absolute value of a is greater than or equal to zero, and negative a, abs yeah, absolute value of negative a just equals to a here. And same as well for positive a just equals to a here. So all it is is just saying it's positive. So this distance from zero. And then basically from this we could generalize it basically in general, absolute value of a is equal to a if uh, a is greater than or equal to zero, but if a is less than zero, then the absolute value of a is just going to be negative a here. Because if this is negative, negative times negative, this becomes uh, positive here, or greater than zero. So that's also greater than zero here. So for just for example, if you have, let's say, absolute value of negative three, this just equals to three. And same as absolute value of three is equal to three, and also absolute value of zero is equal to zero here. So it's just a way of... Uh, denoting just a positive of, of whatever number it is, so, or the absolute value. Okay, so now let's look at some properties here, basically. I have a list of seven properties here. We'll look at each one step by step here. So let's look at this first one here, this square root of a squared is equal to just absolute value of a. Yes, so when we look at uh, the first property here, I'll go through these uh, in a bit, basically square root of a squared is equal to a. Uh, to prove this one here, uh, recall that the square root is usually defined as yeah as the positive root. So what I mean by that is if you have a function, let's say y squared is equal to a here, then then when you square this one, y is going to be equal to plus or minus square root of a here. And and the square root, or uh, yeah, we, we could just take the square root on the other side actually. So we're going to have plus or minus y is equal to square root of a is the same thing. So basically what this is, so then basically square root of a has two values here, but usually take the positive uh, root here. So what that means is basically square root of, yeah, the square root of uh, basically a here has to be greater than zero, greater than equal to zero. But in this case, we have an, an a squared, so same thing here. So we just put the squared here. So square root of a squared has to be greater than equal to zero. And basically, uh, this square root just means, well, a 1 over a squared to the power of 1 over 2 here. And you could, you can, you could uh, simplify this to being a 2 over 2. This equals to a. So, but this is only true if a is greater than or equal to 0 here. Because if a is less than 0, then you're going to have a negative number. But that's then that goes against this property here. So then we'll have to put a negative inside. Yeah, so if a is less than zero, then negative a is going to be greater than zero, and then this would be equal to basically negative a here, and this is greater than zero here. And also, you could just look at this one here. So if you put in, if a was negative here, square root of, uh, let's say, uh, just a negative number, say a, and then when we square this one, whatever you square becomes positive here. So this this inside here is greater than zero. So if you put a negative, it's going to be it's going to be greater than zero, and then square root that's still going to be greater than zero. Yeah, so thus it always gives you the positive value here, and that's why it's a square root here. And then and then if we just write it down like this, basically square root uh, of a squared is equal to a if a is greater than or equal to zero, and vice versa if it's uh, less than, it's going to be negative a if it's a is less than zero here. And this is the exact same as absolute value here. So that's all it is. Thus the absolute value is equal to basically square root of a squared. Now let's look at uh, property 2 here. Now property 2 basically states the absolute value of a times b is equal to absolute value of a times absolute value of b. This one is pretty straightforward. You can just plug in, let's say, yeah, let's just say if a is greater than or equal to 0 for both sides, and this is just basically, it's just going to be a positive number, a times b, and this absolute value of a is a and b. So this one is, is true, because all you're doing just, is all just positive here. Yeah, so then if a is less than 0, and then if b is greater than or equal to 0, so then this one here, we're going to have a absolute value of of basically a, a times b. This one is, is negative, remember? So then to make it positive, it's just going to be a times b. So then this equals 2 in this case here. 
it's gonna be negative a and then times it by this just b here so that's true for this one and vice versa if you have b is less than zero and a is greater than or equal to zero here so as you can see it's the same thing and for property three here this is basically the exact same thing. i'm not going to go over this one is the same thing as number two we could just do exactly what i did making a is greater than zero and b is less than etc because the the multiplication division are very related and now for property four this one is actually uh, pretty easy because uh what is saying absolute value of a a n uh a to the power of n is equal to a absolute value of a to the power of n what well with any power function here so if you have let's say a to the n here this yeah, this does not change it making it negative or positive, only this affects it here. So if you have whatever this value is, if a is greater than zero, then a to the n is always going to be greater than zero here. So it always gives you the absolute value here. So so if, if a is negative in this case, then the absolute value, you're just going to take the positive, and especially this one, you're just going to take the positive of a, because n can't make it negative here. So now this brings me to basically these uh, last following rules. If a is greater than zero, these are useful for uh, a lot of applications, etc. So basically, if you have absolute value of x is it's equal to zero only if yeah if and only x is equal to plus or minus a. And this is actually pretty straightforward once you draw a number line. And x absolute value of x less than a if and only a, if x is in between a and negative a. And if it's greater than a if if x is outside this region here. So I'll draw this right now. Yeah, so basically uh, for rules number five to seven here, if you draw the number line where a is greater than zero here, so we have zero at this center, a is here, negative a is over here. So then if you have x is here, the absolute value is gonna be distance from x to zero, and absolute value of x is equal to a only when when basically x is equal to plus or minus a here. So if x goes to here, then the absolute value is going to be a. and if, Or if x goes to here, the absolute value is going to be a as well here. And this is basically rule 5. And rule 6 is basically saying uh, absolute value of x is less than a. That's, that is only only when x is in between a and negative a here. So because so this is the absolute value of a, this, this value is a. And this also, this value is also a as well because it's positive or absolute value. Same thing. So then if you, it's the only way it's true is if x lies in between you. You can just see it clearly here because this is less than this. If, if basically in this case x is less than a, less than, uh, uh, greater than, equal to negative a. And it also uh, it's greater than, this is, this is rule 6. Yeah, and basically rule 7 states it's uh, the opposite of this one. Basically absolute value of x is greater than a. If x lies less than a or greater than a, um, less than negative a or greater than a. So that's basically if x lies anywhere in, in here, if that's x or this is x, etc. As, as you can see, it's less than negative a and this one is greater than a. So as you can see, from here to here, you're going to have a bigger absolute value. Well, uh, that's all for today. Hope you learned about these uh, these properties. Just basically uh, clarify some absolute value properties. Uh, later, I'll do some examples using absolute values. Yeah, hopefully you learned and uh, recapped on absolute value. That's all for today. You can download these notes in the Dropbox link below. And yeah, stay tuned for another math easy solution.